Hello, in this tutorial we're going to look at how Cut3D can be used for four-sided model machining. We're going to use a 3D Studio model of a Porsche car. You'll see that we've loaded the model. Remember if you're using the trial version of the software that you can actually calculate and save the toolpaths and cut this design on your own machine. So on step one we specify the orientation of the model so the axis that we wish to cut the cut the model from. So we're going to machine straight down onto the top of it. We're going to use what we call four-sided machining, so top, bottom, front, and from the back. We specify the size that we want the model to be. Let's say we've got a piece of material that's almost two inches thick, so if we scale it to 1.9 in the z-axis, you'll see that the x and the y get scaled proportionately. Hit the apply button. Next to step two, we specify where we want the x0, y0 origin to be. And for four-sided machining, it's probably best to be in the middle of the design. We specify the limits for the material. Let's say we have a piece of material that's, say, 8 inches by 3 inches by 2 inches thick. Z0 is going to be off the surface of each face of the block of material. If we click the Apply button, you'll see now that we get the... the, the black rectangle represents the banding box for the material that we're going to cut into. We wish to have a, an op a border around the car so that the cutter can actually, you'll see at the moment if we look straight down the z-axis, the cutter can't fit down the sides or at the back and the fronts because it's going to cut onto the dark green area and there's nowhere for the cutter to drop down the side of the model. So if we said we wanted a symmetrical border of say 0.2 of an inch and apply so the dark green area gets bigger by 0.2 of an inch and that's the area that the cut is going to cut onto. Twiddle with the left mouse button. You'll see that the dark green plane or the cut plane runs through the centre of the car. We can move this using the slider. So we can move this up or down. Position it just on the bumper area. Hit the apply button to store those details. We can also force the cutter to overcut when it hits the top, the plane from the top and from the bottom. If it stops at the plane, you'll end up with a fillet from the form on the, the bore nose cutter on the top on the bottom. So you end up with a little mark all the way around the, the split line effectively on the design. So if we force it to overcut by, say, 0.15 of an inch and apply, we view straight down the z-axis again can say add some tabs here we can say add a tab if we just click it will add a tab it will merge from the material edge into the the bumper or the front of the car likewise we could add a tab on the back so we could click click to add tabs you notice that those tabs are probably a little bit big so we can very easily just select the tab make the tab a little bit bigger so 0.3 by Point 0.1 of an inch. Select the other tab, make it 0.3 wide by 0.1 again. You'll see that the tabs have automatically updated to the correct size. We can also put tabs on the side of the car if we wish to, to make it more stable. So close. So we've set up the material size, specified the machining margins, added the tabs, you click the next button, software is now calculating the models needed for four-sided machining. We're going to do rough machining. We'll use a quarter-inch end mill. Step down and all of the speeds and feeds should be set for the material and the machine. Let's say we can cut quarter of an inch at a time because we're roughing quite a large 40% step over. We'll leave 40 thousandths on for the finishing to take off and say calculate. So the software is now calculating the roofing toolpath for the top face, for the bottom, for the front, and finally it calculates the roofing toolpath for the back of the design. So it's calculated four sets of toolpaths. So now if we just view along an axis, you can see that we have planar Z roofing passes going around the design. That's looking for the top toolpath. We can look at the bottom toolpath, the front toolpath, and the back toolpath. Go back to the top. Click the next button. 
Now we're ready to calculate the finishing toolpath. So we select the cutter again. Let's say for in this case we have a, a little 8 inch bore nose. Set the speeds and feeds again and calculate. So the software is now calculating the toolpath of the top faces. Calculated the bottom face, calculated the bottom, the front, and the back face. So again, just zoom in a little bit, you'll see that we have the toolpath over the top of the car, toolpath for the bottom of the car, toolpath for the front, and the toolpath for the back. We go back to an isometric view, click next. We could cut the shape out if we wish, but with four-sided machining, it's not appropriate to calculate this sort of toolpath. So next again. Now we go to the preview mode. We can remember we're looking at the top of the design, so we can preview the roofing toolpath. So this shows the roofing toolpath machining at Z level slices. So we have the planar roofing passes and you'll see that it's left the tabs in place. We can preview the finishing toolpath. So this is machining to size, taking off the 40 thousandths allowance that we left on for the roofing. So that's the top of the design. If we look at the bottom, we have a solid block of material on the bottom. We can preview the roofing again. Now we see the roofing, that would be the result of the roofing toolpaths. We can preview the finishing toolpath. So remember we would have machined the one face, flipped the material over, registered it against an axis on the machine to make sure we get correct alignment. We now have the toolpaths, the preview for the bottom and for the top. We can also do the same for the front. So we could preview the roofing toolpath. The roofing toolpath for the front of the the car or the design. So again, Z level roofing. We can preview the finishing toolpath, finishing it, cutting it to size. And you do the same thing for the back. So you turn the material over, realign it, and run the finishing toolpaths and the roofing toolpaths. So now we've got four sets of toolpaths. If we click next we're ready to save the toolpaths so again if we say top so we're now going to save the top set of toolpaths so we could save the roofing toolpaths so roofing for the top select the bottom except select the roofing toolpath for the bottom and the same for the front so roofing for the front and from the back again and the same for the, for the finishing toolpaths so you select the axis that the toolpaths are calculated down and save each set of toolpaths. So just to summarize, we've loaded a 3D studio model, we've set the size and the orientation, specified the material limits and put a cut plane through the middle onto which we're going to machine, calculated the roofing Z level roofing toolpaths, the raster based finishing toolpaths, we didn't calculate a cutout toolpath because we've done all four sides. Preview the results. And finally, save the toolpaths ready for machining on your own CNC machine. Thank you for watching the video.